So this is Guild Tree. The build I'm showing now is a build. It's between Alpha and Beta, pretty much. So there's still some technical glitches left and right. There's still some little things to tweak on the graphical side. Uh, but overall, it shows a pretty good idea of where the game uh, is heading and what it's going to look like when it's done. So um, uh, we're st I'm still going to show it like it is. Uh, but like I said, if you see, like, if there's any problem in what I'm showing, it's because we know about it and it's going to be fixed. Uh, the game, uh, I'm guessing some of you like, or most of you know about what the game is about. I can do like a, maybe, or if everyone knows, I'm not going to do it, a quick introduction. Well, let's do it anyway. Um, so the game is a medieval strategy game set in Northern Europe in the 1400s. So it's a realistic game. It is not about, um, I'm just going to do the basic uh, default uh, options. So it's not about skeletons and magic swords and dragons or anything like that. It's really set in a realistic environment. Uh, and we're trying to make you know, realistic cities, realistic looking settings. And the point of the game is to create a dynasty. So it's not to build up an army and to invade people. It's not about you know, killing all of your opponents. Uh, it's really a sandbox kind of game where you're playing uh, a life simulator and an economic simulator in the late Middle Ages. The way that we've made this, though, because this is Guild 3, Guild 1 and Guild 2 were made by another developer. Uh, Guild 2 was released 10 years ago now, so it's been aged a little while. And we've been listening to the, the reviews and uh, the requests from the players and from uh, early development. What we wanted to do is to create a game that would be as complex, that would have all of the elements of the first two games, but we're ordering them out in a way that makes it better for players to get into it. Because a game like this, a game like Guild, is a really complex game and you have a very steep learning curve. Uh, you have to invest some time to really understand what the game is about and to really master the game. So what we've done is we've kept everything as it was, but we're laying it out in difficult in, in levels so that when you're starting the game right now, I'm a serf, so I'm pretty much like a peasant. No one cares that I exist or worries about me. So I don't have to worry about politics. I don't have to worry about secret societies and things like that uh, because they don't worry about me. So I can train, do my little things. It's pretty much like an RPG at this point. And as you're going to grow your character, you're going to start to opening up businesses. Then you get to have employees that do the things that you were doing before. So you don't, you can concentrate on business business management, you can concentrate on you know, growing your dynasty, and then uh, later on in parts in, in the game, when you become a nobleman, then you get to worry about politics, you get to worry about all of these other elements, and you have someone else running your business. So at every step of the game, there's something new that gets unlocked, there's some new gameplay that gets unlocked, and you can leave behind something that um, was done before. So one of the other oh, little drunk ladies. Um, one of the things that we wanted to achieve, this is one of the maps of the game. Uh, we're using the Vigil engine that was used for Darksiders as well. We've pretty much like it was an engine that was originally made for a shooter kind of game, but we've optimized it and made, you know, changed it in ways to make it possible to do these kinds of larger environments. Maps can be up to 16 times the sizes of maps in Guild 2. So, and we've increased the graphics quality. And one of the things that we wanted to do right from the start is that uh, in, in a lot of these games, when you're seeing like medieval villagers, you're going to see uh, houses left and right, very spaced about, because it's easier for pathfinding. Uh, but you know, medieval cities, they're really crammed together. Houses are built on top of one another. So we really wanted to have an environment that felt dense in the, the, the building areas, where buildings are really built you know, close to one another. And we really wanted to keep, um, like to keep increase the map sizes and increase the complexity of, uh, of what you can do in maps. One of the things that I've, where am I in time? Um, like I said, one of the things that we've done is that we've unified the progress tree. So beforehand, there was, you can in increase your businesses, you can increase your houses, you can increase your character. You can, like there was multiple paths of multiple points of things. Now you're earning experience points and it's pretty much like a typical um, skill tree, like an RPG skill tree. So you're earning points, it's unlocking skills, you're unlocking things that you can do with your skills, it's unlocking actions and items that you can craft. And at the same time, on the left side, you can see like right now I'm a surf working to become a commoner. So your experience point increases your level, again like a, an RPG kind of game. And with, e with each level, you get to unlock specific new actions, specific new things that you can do. So as a commoner, I'm going to be able, for instance, to build a business. So at first, you're not, you, you don't have to worry about business management. You're doing things by yourself. And as you're rate, uh, increasing in level, this is when the complexity of the game starts to kick in one step at a time to make it more um, 
make it more uh, easy for new players to get into it and keeping with the tradition for old players to keep them inside the game and that they can see all of the things in the game is there because you're going to see there's many actions that you can do, there's many things that you can unlock, businesses levels that you can unlock with new things as well, new items um, and extra and so forth and so on. So the game supports uh, up to 16 player multiplayer as well. I know that there was uh, questions about out of sync things. Now, when we started making Guild 2, uh, we are not reusing any of the code, any of the art assets. We really started from a blank slate. So there's none of the problems that were in the previous versions of the games that transpired over to this version of the game. Now, we're trying not to introduce new problems. And this is why the game um, is being polished and tailored and um, being worked on right now. But there's no, like a lot of people ask us, is, does it have the same thing? Does it do it behave in the same way? So we're not, it's not a mod, it's not a thing that we're reusing any of the old assets. And um, one of the concepts of the game that um, is really important to us is uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Now the studio that I work for, Gollum Labs, is something that we're trying to push in every game that we make. And it was a, something that was very important for THQ Nordic as well when we started that game to have much more emphasis on personalizing our dynasties. One of the images that I keep having is that imagine in Game of, Tr <coughs> sorry, in Game of Thrones, if you're uh, dealing with a Stark or dealing with a Lannister, you're not going to deal with them in the same way. You can't bribe with them or trade with them or threaten them or whatever. So there's two noble families, but they really have distinct philosophies, distinct personalities. Uh, even if your character dies, you know, even when Ned Stark dies, his son take over, it's still a Stark. It's still the same kind of family ethos and, and personality. So we really want to bring that inside the game as well. So uh, when, you know, if your warehouse, warehouse burns down, you sort of, even if you don't have a proof, you sort of know who might have done that because you start to know how the families behave. So we really want to have neighborhoods that have very distinct personalities and AI families that are not just you know, generic um, opponents that are there to attack you. They have goals, they have personalities, they are like living, breathing people. Because one of the concepts of the game, for those that don't know the game, is that because you're building a dynasty, in time, your character ages and dies. Right now we're starting in the summer of 1400, but your character is eventually going to die, either from old age or from being poisoned or attacked. When that happens, you're not game over. If that happens, you can continue playing the game, but uh, it's going to be your son or your daughter or your heir. The only way to lose the game if you've not set yourself personal goals is if you don't have children. If you do not have children, then your line ends and this is when the game stops. But when you have children, then you can continue playing the game. Uh, if you're uh, starting to be at the end of your life or you feel particularly threatened and you've not married yet, you can always go to church and buy an orphan. And there's like a, well, by, okay, it's not, you're making a donation to church and the church gives you an orphan. It's two completely, two unrelated things. Um, but it gives you like a way out uh, so that you can continue playing the game um, as your dynasty. Of course, it's always better to get married because it generates an alliance between the families and you have like better chances of having someone who's not sick. Um, like right now, I've not interacted with the game in any way and you can see that it's nighttime. Uh, we have realistic day and night weather season effect. It's not just to be pretty. When it's nighttime, uh, you can be attacked more. If you're, pick, like if you're stealing houses, it's better at night because, of course, it's, it's, it's harder to be caught. When it's winter time, there's less food. The crops are not there, of course, so people are stockpiling food during the uh, fall season. There's more uh, sicknesses and diseases and during the winter time. So the, underneath all of that, there's an, uh, a life simulation and an economic simulation that really powers the city. So you can feel it being you know, alive and thriving and growing and, and stuff like that. Because it's not a city building game. You can interact with the city. You can build businesses. You can do all of these things in later parts of the game. But we really wanted to have an environment that felt alive uh, where people you know, can spend a lot of like many hours into a single map. So the game is supposed to come out in a few months. Uh, we can always check on the website or on the Facebook page for uh, official information about that. And if you have any questions, now would be the time. Or I can continue just talking very fast.